Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. Now, I'm showing on the latest updates that February is going to be an extreme month. It's going to be extreme precipitation, extreme angles from troughs and ridges creating severe weather and big storms, and it's going to be extreme snowfall with some cold air that's going to come in. For a while, we're still going to be in this trough. I'm talking all the way to next week. Well, these storms are going to keep riding this way right on this trough and keep going towards the Great Lakes. Now, remember, we do have a storm coming around the 10th, and we got another one coming in the middle of February, and this is going to bring our cold air right back. So don't think that winter is over. Do not put away your winter clothes just yet. So I'm going to show you all the latest information. If you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I'm all year long. Make sure you click the bell so you do get the updates. I always put timestamps in the description to help save you time. Thank you again for visiting my channel. Now let's get into your information. Now you can see the latest information on your vorticity. This storm system is going all the way down, bringing severe weather for today. Also overnight tonight. For tomorrow, going right along the south, and then it's going to carry all the way towards Sunday, towards Florida as you go Sunday and Monday, pushing right offshore and sitting there still bringing some heavy precipitation with that. While we're still going to be on this high ridge on this bubble, and you can see as you go from the 6th through the 10th, we stay in that all week long. Bring in a potential snowstorm around the 10th, somewhere around the upper Midwest of Great Lakes. It's been trending further to the north. Then we got our transition coming right for the middle of the month. Bring in snowfall. Potentially, it's all about timing. Now, you can see the latest information with HRRR that started getting them storm cells starts popping up as you go through this afternoon for the south central. And actually, if you take a look, you'll see that you get a surface low pressure that just sits there and actually spins why it goes right back up on that high ridge brings those storms but that just rotates right there and spins as well so not only is severe weather on the southern side it is going to start springing some winds around as this surface load just spins around i see this forming also on the gulf bringing some more winds towards the south a little bit towards louisiana mississippi and maybe even towards florida we also see it's bringing the bowen effect but this is a lot of bowen you can see all the features pushing by saturday morning at five o'clock you can also see as you keep on going it keeps bowing out all saturday morning a big bowen right there for southwestern louisiana before noon and it still pushes look at that bowen still pushing still pushing to the east it's like it really gets strong around the West Bank around Saturday night going into Mississippi as well and southern Alabama. So just be aware that that's going to be a, a strong line of storms that's going to be pulling up. And another thing, the reason why I'm showing you this, when we get that next storm system, after all week long of this trough, it's going to do the same thing. This one's going a little bit further to the north. So here's the latest update. You did ramp up your severe weather for today, and a slight risk is going to be for the hail. Matter of fact, chances for two inches in diameter in all of this black area. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for the hail threat for today. And the large hail is a white line on top. Also bringing those winds. I'll show you that bow went out. That could intensify a little bit more. It shows it's getting stronger as it goes overnight Friday into Saturday for eastern Texas going into western Louisiana. Be aware of that. And your tornado threat has grown in area for today as well. A 2%. So here's your cities and states at risk. So far it's only showing Texas, but you do see it does go towards Oklahoma as well. And National Weather Service has severe hail, damaging gusts, and a tornado or two are possible over parts of the southern plains from late afternoon into this evening. Just like I showed you in the models, you can see that right here where they talked about what I just told you. We can also see right here that a more substantial severe threat is apparent across parts of northwest, central, and southwest Texas. And you see they do say that supercellular and Boeing quasi-linear modes are possible and near the slight risk area. So just be aware, it will be isolated, but it will be severe hail. It will be strong wind gusts, also isolated, and the tornadoes can pop up out of that. And quasi-linear is when you have this front of storms, and they're really like this of storm systems all pushing in the same direction. Now, if you look for Saturday, you'll see that smaller risk for severe weather. There's no chance for the hail, but there is a little chance still for the wind of 5% and a little chance of tornadoes for Texas. Now, this is actually overnight. This will be Friday overnight into Saturday morning. And still showing that before it goes offshore, there's still a chance for a threat of localized damage and winds and maybe a brief tornado. Just be aware of that. And then as it pushes further to the east on Sunday, you got a severe weather threat for southern Florida. 
and still showing that big pocket of wins. This is bringing 40, 50, 60, and all this orange to the red for Oklahoma as well. But once you go overnight Friday into Saturday morning, watch in this region, and you'll see how it grows again in those winds. And that's from that surface low forming right here, just like I showed you, going on that pivot. Bring a lot of winds, bring the 60s and the 70s towards New Mexico, the higher elevations. You also can see over here for Louisiana, starting to pick up that 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gust for Southern Mississippi as well, as that transitions into the Gulf and gets stronger in the Gulf, but still showing a threat for the coast. So just be aware for that as well. So you can see this as you go into the afternoon, all these storms start brewing up also for the Panhandle of Texas, going to Oklahoma, even going into Western Kansas, where you got all these storms brewing up for Central Texas all night long, and then it pushes further and further to the south in Texas. Goes overnight into the early morning hours for eastern Texas, getting all that bowing, and that's when it goes towards Louisiana. Now that's when you start to get all this hail. All this is indicative to chances for a strong updraft, getting chances for large hail in the brighter colors. Just be aware that you do have trails of hail before the storms go out into the Gulf. Just be aware for Texas mostly. Bring in some strong lightning flashes, just your lightning flashes with the Ural. You can see it goes all evening long and over here in this dark pink this is where you get your chances for your hail that's a lot of lightning flashes it's a strong updraft keeping that hail getting bigger and bigger as it gets to that white as you go towards midnight now going towards southern texas look at this there's a lot of lightning strikes all night long all morning long and then for saturday it goes right along the coast of louisiana and goes in the gulf a little bit of mississippi as well then as that goes off, look, we're still in this very high warm up. Still got this big trough bringing all this rainfall, this snowfall. As that goes all the way towards the 10th. Then we started getting our systems forming for the upper Midwest. You see one right there, very high to the north. The next one would be a little bit lower. Right when you get around the 10th through the 12th. You can't see that far with the Euro. So we're taking that storm system coming around the 8th and the 9th for the upper Midwest, bringing potential snowfall, maybe even bringing a lot of snow towards the Rocky Mountains, I will show you. And that comes up, potentially bringing some storms on the 9th for the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes right in front of this system. As that goes east, then once you go to the 10th, then you get that other storm system forming up in the south, going towards the Great Lakes like I've been showing you, potentially bringing a good snowstorm with it because this is when we start getting that cold air. Remember, the Arctic air will remain to the north. This will just be a cold blast as you go from the 13th through the 15th, just bringing more potential snow. Now, this is about timing, whether it comes all evening long like this is showing, all the way to the early morning hours, or if it comes during your daytime hours, it's all going to be a sloppy mess. So in comparison, you can see with the control member of the Euro Ensembles all the way up towards the seven days. Getting a lot of heavy snowfall. All this is very heavy. You're talking 12 inches or more. Southeastern Idaho, Western Wyoming, Utah, Nevada, Colorado getting a lot. Matter of fact, GFS is going gangbuster on Colorado and is showing over a foot for Denver. Also, higher elevations of Arizona getting potentially a foot or two. New Mexico, higher elevations of California is still getting a lot more snow. This is still bringing a bunch. Then you can see you get that storm system that comes through the upper Midwest, not bringing a bunch. Somebody's going to get a three to five, a swath of snow. Then we get that transition happening from the 10th through the 15th bringing that cold air again, maybe a sloppy mess, maybe a big snowstorm. It all depends. We still got to get closer. It's still way too far. But you can see the same thing with the GFS, but the GFS still shows all these very strong storms because we got a lot of favorable environment, a lot of lifting atmosphere for now for this 10th and for what's coming later. And all this is very heavy snowfall going up all the way to the 10th. The ne next one as it transitions could be perfect timing and meet up to a lot of snowfall. Still too far to take this seriously, but I will keep you updated. But you can see how that trough keeps going deeper, way deeper, and brings snow potentially in northern Mexico too. But they're both agreeing that it's still going to bring a lot of rainfall and bring flooding. Matter of fact, this is getting worse. This is going into the moderate stage. Remember I told you in the video day before yesterday that this is going to grow. It's going to go into the moderate stage, and it has everybody. Showing after about three days, it's really going to add up over here for Southern California, 
really heavy. And then you're going to get that next system that comes in on the 4th. That's going to add up even more. Then you got another system coming in on the 10th. It's just going to be an ongoing transition with all this precipitation with this trough. But this is adding up just for the next five days. Still got a lot more rainfall coming, especially towards Southern California. Showing it will add up to a lot. Just the next five days of rainfall, bringing another seven inches towards the LA area. And then as you keep going for the next storm system, that's going to pop in as well. And it's going to go over the same areas. Not as heavy, but you still have potentially another five to seven inches coming sometime within the next four to five days. And adding up for the south and the southeast. First, we got this storm happening now. Then we got the one that's hitting on the fourth and the fifth on the west coast. That's going to come across as well and bring some more precipitation in certain areas. So let's just go just for the next five days, the precipitation that y'all going to be seeing out of the storm system that's passing by now. Really hitting New Orleans, the boot of Louisiana, and central and southern Mississippi really hard. And over here for southeastern Georgia, southwestern South Carolina, a lot of heavy rainfall coming your way. And maybe getting more on that next transition. We will see. It's going on a pretty high ridge for quite some time. At the same time, look at the new drought monitor. So we have gotten still a problem with our drought for New Mexico. Still got the exceptional and extreme drought. And look over here for Louisiana, northern Mississippi. We still need more, but it has gone down greatly. Western Tennessee, it just has gone down greatly. However, we still need more rainfall coming. So this is going to help as well. And now you can see how much has grown. So for today, you do have a risk for flash flooding. All of this marginal for flash flooding. For tomorrow, this is going to grow. Go all the way to Kansas, but you still have a slight risk. For Texas, going into Louisiana, going to southern Mississippi. This is for flash flooding. So just be aware you could see some ditches or some canals overspilling and getting on the roads and maybe even in your urban areas like dead-end streets. But also going Sunday towards the southeast. Hit more Mississippi, going from Alabama all the way down towards Florida, bringing a chance for your flash flooding. But now look at a difference for the west coast. Here you are on Saturday. You have a marginal for flash flooding. This is where it gets started. Then you got that next storm system coming in for Sunday. Bam. Straight to the slight risk. Straight to the moderate level risk for flash flooding. And it's going to be there from Monday as well. You do have a slight risk in a marginal going all the way up past Sacramento, but this moderate level risk is going to be there for a couple of days. So just be aware so far Sunday and Monday is showing where the most extreme flooding will be. Then on Tuesday is going to be there as well. This will probably transfer over to another moderate level risk. And this is where it goes into Arizona and brings Phoenix and brings y'all the chance for y'all flash flooding. So remember, this trough will be all the way until around the 10th. Then you're going to go on that high ridge as well. Then we're going to get that trough again for that next storm system. And this one's going to last a little bit longer and it's going deeper. So just be aware of that. It's still trending that that has not gone away. And it's also bringing a lot of this cold air right back. So that's why I said don't put your winter clothes away just yet. So you can see with your latest information on your Arctic Oscillation that you have this cold dip still coming through even though you're in this warm bubble is gonna bring some cooler air at night and some cold wind chills at night, but it will warm back up every single day. I showed you yesterday, I will update you real quick. And you can see the update on that next transition. It is going to be an intense February. This cold air is going to come back and bring potentially not only that snow, but freezing temperatures and maybe even the negative wind chills. It's all about timing. It's too far to take where you can prepare for it now, but I will keep you updated. Because you can see that here as you go all the way from the 6th through the 10th, you get that troughing going on. You get this trough going all along the southwest bringing these storms our way. Now, if you keep your eye on it, you'll see that that deepens. And then when we get that next one, right after the 10th, watch how this just transitions further to the south. Look at that. Now you got a big deep trough going all the way down, bringing a high ridge, bringing these storms and bringing not only the rainfall, potential snowfall as we go through that next transition. Look at that all the way from the 10th through the 13th, and it goes even deeper. There's going to be more. Also, you can see when you look at all of North America, as we go into that transition from the 10th and on, we get that deeper trough. Look at all the precipitation that's going to start adding up 
for the eastern side of the U.S., maybe even into Mexico as well. And that's when you get that deep trough bringing all that all that heavy rainfall. That's when you get that potential snowfall that's coming with that transition as well. But even if it don't meet those temperatures, that will bring a lot of flooding. And you better believe there will be some more storms forming up just like we're dealing with now from the trough that we have now. But let's take it one week at a time. I will keep you updated. You've seen the data. The model runs is going to be all over the place. It's stick to the data. The data is accurate. The model runs eventually come to the data and they all start trending. You just got to give it time. It's still too far away. You can see for the next 10 days, it's still not showing that. So it's still past that time. Potentially getting four inches of snow to Denver. GFS is showing that's potentially over a foot. It's just gangbuster on everybody. Even over here for Arizona, Flagstaff, New Mexico. Look at Euro. Look at GFS. Just a lot of snowfall potentially coming on this next transition. You can see this with the Euro bringing six inches to a foot to a lot of people. And you can see the GFS. Just gangbusters on all this potential snow that's coming out of this. And it's going to go up quick on that high ridge. Because we're going to be on that big warm up. But you can see this for yourself as we go on this warm up. You can see your temperatures. You got cooler temperatures that's going to come back down from the third. Going to warm up every day. You're going to see cooler temperatures come down. Not only for the Rocky Mountains towards the west coast. Towards the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes and the northeast. This is going on in this big bubble, but this is going to bring some cooler temperatures at night. And these cooler temperatures are also going to bring those wind chills with it as that goes all the way from the 5th, all the way towards the East Coast, all the way towards the 8th, the 7th and the 8th. You still got that big warm bubble, but that big warm bubble is going to move to the east and this cold air is going to transition across as we go towards the 10th and beyond. Still showing we have a lot of those wind chills still moving through all the way through the 5th. And it will go all the way past the first week of February. Bringing a lot of cold wind chills. Warm up every single day. But then the wind chills are going to come right back in at night again. And you see right around the 10th through the 12th, that cold air moving through. It is going to start bringing in those wind chills. But once again, just like yesterday, you can see how all the Arctic air, all the very cold negative temperatures will remain to the north. And I will give you the next update on Sunday morning when I come back from Sabbath. I wanted to give these away today. I have three of them that is coming. It did not show up just yet. So this will more than likely be in Sunday's video. Thank you again for your time, everybody. Hope you have a very great weekend this weekend. I will see you again on Sunday morning for the updates. Before you go real quick, Psalm 125. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed but abideth forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth, even forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. As for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity, but peace shall be upon Israel. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. And remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he always keeps you safe, you and your family, and forever, and keeps peace in your home. That's most important, is to have peace in your heart, and spread peace in your home. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Have a great day, everybody.